This conference will now be recorded. Uh, so how can I make a full screen? Uh, check uh, Durga, there must be some options with you uh, for that purpose. I okay. see all the times, you know, half of the screen. So it is uh, toggle full screen, right? The three dots and toggle full screen, right? Yeah, just try that one. Yeah, I did that, but about to this screen, you know, I see the attendee names and all. So if we can remove that, I think this screen will be much more bigger in size. Uh, I uh, cannot uh, do one thing. Uh, next time onwards, because I think uh, I remember that you reported this issue first day also. Uh, so yeah, yeah. But, the small screen and uh, small letters, you know, it's uh, <laughs> uh, for I me, know, the no small letters. Do one thing, download this, go to uh, this one, go to meeting, desktop app, and uh, that should probably solve that issues because maybe in the browser or something, some settings are not as appropriate. Okay, uh, other people can see it, right? Correctly? Other people can see that, right? Uh, yeah, I I'll try to see and uh, come back. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Okay, guys. Other, focus. For others, everything is fine, Akhilesh. Yeah, I installed. Yeah, install that application. Sorry, it looks fine. Okay, okay. I'll do that then tomorrow. Yeah, you can continue, uh, Rajesh. Yeah. Okay, guys. So the first thing is, what is pod? This is the most important question which I was holding it. Now. I'm finding always, I'm teaching Kubernetes from last five, six years actually. And I always find it difficult to explain this one. What is pod? Uh, at initial level. Once you experience the pod, then everything is okay. That, but those who have no idea about the pod, how can I explain it? So I put a little bit in a context actually. Okay. So let's put it in the context. So for example, you know VMware, correct? All of you, VirtualBox, VMware, you know? Correct? Yeah. Yeah. So VMware manages what? VMware manages what? What they manages? VMs, correct? Huh? Hypervisor manages the VMs. VSphere manages the VM. VirtualBox manages the VM. Correct? Now, all of you. Now, Docker manages what? Tell me. Containers. Containers. Wonderful. Containers. So guys here, same way, Kubernetes have no idea about the container actually. Yes, Kubernetes has no idea about the container. Because container is managed by Docker, no? So what manage, Kubernetes, what they do that? How they deploy their application? So in, see, in a VM where you deploy application in the VM, Docker, you deploy the application in a container. So in a Kubernetes, what happens? You, whenever you deploy, you deploy application in a pod, and that's the reason you see that here. These all are applications, and it got deployed in pod. These all are pod actually. So yes, all this application which is getting deployed in the Kubernetes pod. Kubernetes don't understand VMs. Kubernetes don't understand containers. Kubernetes only understand pod. So when you are on a Kubernetes, let's talk only about the pod. So this is the first line. Are you comfortable so far? Yeah, right. yes. yes. Okay. So guys, second line, second line. So VMs contain what? Operating system. Agree with me? Agree with yeah. me? Yeah. Yeah. Container contain what? So root file system. I hope you remember the root file system. I hope so. Yeah, we remember. Mm. Root file system, user file yeah. system. Ah, root plus 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 plus. So starting with root, right? Yes. Correct. Yes. Here you you have a boot also. Uh, so Kubernetes contains what? So you know the funniest thing is Kubernetes contains containers. Containers. I said it can contain one container also, multiple containers. Yes. What is a pod? So pod is wrapping around the container. Simple. 
so in a pod you have one container and two container okay in a pod you have a one container two container so you can say pod is like a you can say something like a pod like a label something like that so in a pod you will have a container one container or multiple container so guys here in the world of vmware us get ip address so here in the world of container you know container get ip address which i showed you yesterday i mean last last session in kubernet also pod get ip address so that means if you want to access you have to access the pod not a container so inside a pod you will have a container which you basically indirectly access it are you able to comfort get comfortable with that kubernetes pod pod has container container uh, can be accessed through the pod ip address all this thing are you understanding yes yes and i'll tell you guys in the container now let's talk about the container life cycle okay container life cycle which you know that very well container life cycle we create a container yesterday we did that we create a container you can start the container you can stop the container you can kill the container you can pause the container all this thing you can do that with the container but 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 pod you cannot create a pod see the confusion here yes pod cannot be created pod cannot be started pod cannot be stopped pod cannot be uh, what do you say pod cannot be restarted all this thing you cannot pause the container a pod okay so pod container is a i will say physical entity which you can experience physical entity you can say in t t but here pod is basically a virtual entity virtual entity i'll put it in a more context way so can you touch the sky tell me can you touch, touch the no. land no. can you touch yes. the land yes, yes i can touch you you can touch me i can touch a laptop i can touch keyboard i can touch a bus i can touch a, uh, uh, anything so these are the physical entity but can you touch a sky no i cannot touch but still we all are inside a sky correct now yes okay yes. so here pod is a logical entity if someone will say hey rajesh i want to go inside a pod how can you go inside a sky but if you say hey rajesh i, I want to go inside a land yeah you can go so container you can see of the pod but pod you cannot see pod is not generating any waste for example you cannot see the logs of the pod if you can see the logs of container but you cannot see the logs of the pod you can access the container of the pod but you cannot access pod see that so what is a pod pod is a logical entity to contain to to you know wrap the containers around it and then kubernet manage kubernet deploy application in a form of pod are you understanding all of you yes rajesh so guys if you ask me rajesh give me the pod which you which got uh, uh, destroyed yesterday i'll say i cannot give it to you because same pod you will never get it kubernet will never give you same pod then which pod you will get similar pod similar kubernet will create a similar pod but not a same pod there is a difference same versus similar you have to understand so the pod cannot be redeployed again it's not it's there or it's not there simple it's, so the state of the life cycle of the pod is it will be in the pending pod is can be instantiated container can be created when i showed you the command container docker create and container id i mean image but pod you cannot do that create you have to instantiate now what is the difference between create and instantiate anyone would like to tell me yeah 
instantiation versus creation anyone creating can be visualized where like we can see uh, the location of it where it is and all ha huh. so initiation means uh, do you know that the act of brahma right okay so he is instantiating the each object each class each class instantiation means he is creating a property of each class but who's creating it we human are or other uh, natural uh, things is creating the object for example human is a class but that's brahma create the human no he's he's created a skeleton i mean class two hand two 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 leg two eyes and all but who produce that uh, human we you we human only produce a human right creating right so it's like this pod is is a logical entity so pod can be instantiated whereas container can be created so the pod the something which you cannot create how can you stop and start you cannot do that so pod cannot be created pod can be instantiated so it is in pending state and running state that's all these are the state pending running succeeded failed okay succeeded failed something like this are you understanding there's no create start stop restart all these thing blah 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 for the pod yeah any questions so how do we get to know like yeah there is a pod there and uh, the containers are inside that pod how do we for get that to know that I just got to know here. I just got to know how many ports are there. These many ports are there. How many uh, uh, this one? What you say? Uh, in container inside the port. So there's a command for everything. Describe port. Which port? Four DNS. See how how many containers are there? In these two containers are there? No. So you see here. There's a spelling mistake. see this is the complete detail of the pod how many containers are there container id this is the one container go down second container where is that there is another container got it yeah so yes so, so some of yeah tell me rajesh as you said like uh... uh kubernetes never uh, creates the same pods so when it creates uh, the similar pods so mm -hmm. might be the ip address gets changed right 100% correct observation by the way you can customize and you can inform kubernetes hey kubernetes don't change the uh, and uh, keep this range and all stuff like that but ip address will change for sure yes okay so that's the reason i was telling uh, to the durga don't stick to your application instance it might come it might go you don't you never know but the only thing concept you should understand so you can correlate that why i was saying don't get attached to the applications and all what will happen once the application will get destroyed what will happen this is a regular thing which is happening in the uh, in the production actually so yeah yeah when you log into the facebook you don't log into the single machines uh Correct. through that there is a session different server login server your whatever the state of application is in different location and static is different locations so like that. yeah okay so uh, i don't know how many of you have understood but slowly we'll get it but let me conclude this pod so guys pod is a unit of deployment in kubernetes that means in kubernetes you when you deploy pod you deploy the pod pod is containing containers pod get ip address pod get a volume pod get a storage everything you get it as allo allocated to the pod so any number of containers which is which is inside a pod which is of the pod will share the all resources assigned to the pod okay so the, like ip address also pod cannot be created it can be instantiated and the life cycle of the pod is pending running succeeded and failed pod can be instantiated by kubelet 
that is important. Pot can be instantiated by cubelet. Look at this image here. Follow my cursor. Cubelet, pod, container. So pod is cubelet. And cubelet you have here also, master also, worker also, everywhere you have cubelet. So <clears throat> this is the pod at a high level. Let's move on to the next uh, things. And how do we work with it? So some of the commands I would like to know. So I have given you some of the commands here in the notes also. You're going to get comfortable with it. Okay. And after that, I'm going to give you some more commands for it. So some of the command is, let's say I don't know any commands. So what should I do? Cube, C, cube CTL. Oh, I got so many commands here. So many commands I got to know. Whether you understand or not understand, please read at least one of these commands. There's no harm in it. No, you're not understanding, no problem. But at least you're getting familiar with this keyword, right? That is more important. Okay, so try to understand this. After that, you want to know how many resources you have, which you want to learn. So, uh, API resources. Again, try to get comfortable with all these things, resources. Spelling mistake actually here. So these are the resources you have to learn throughout the your uh, 57, I think 73, I think, because Calico is got destroyed, right? Grab um, uh, 72, total 72 resources you have here. Okay, so total 72 resources you have to, these 72 resources you have to learn, out of which uh, 15, 20s are belongs to Calico, the remaining you can learn. So here, let me minimize this one little bit less. Just get comfortable with it. So I'll teach you anyways, many of this. Here. So these are the things you have to start with V1 and slowly, slowly you have to get into that. So your job in Kubernetes, you know, learning these resources, how to use it. I'll teach you. So here name, short name, just get comfortable. API version name space true and false kind and all. So here you have API versions also this command. So these are the version which is supported by the API server. Okay, so most of these are V1. You will get uh, V2 and all such like that. So yeah, now what is the kubectl version which you are using? What is the server version? This is the command. See here client version 1.236. 236 server version okay so all this thing which is important okay so overall these are the commands which we need to run and get comfortable uh, with the server well if you're understanding that uh yeah rajesh could you please go rajesh could you please go to once that architecture diagram that cube uh, I just yeah no no yeah that one yes no the below one the below one yeah here you said about kubelet right so what is this kubelet agent kubelet is an agent which has to run in each worker of the cluster including master and worker okay okay kubelet if this guy is not running your cluster is not stable simple if that guy is not running in the worker, that worker is not a part of the cluster. Uh -huh. Okay. Okay. So now this is the one. Now I'll teach you a few components. Before that, I'll give you some time to get comfortable with it. So whatever the command I run, you have to run the same command, observe the output and all something. Like so few components which I'm going to teach you is namespace. I'm going to teach you how to create a pod, and then I'm going to teach you replication controller. This is the things. Tomorrow, I'm going to teach you deployment and services. Very important one. So these five resources I'm going to teach you in the cluster in this session. And these are the five resources you want to understand how. So let me put it in this way. Pod means you know what? EC2 instance. I'm just trying to correlate. Okay. Replication controller means what? ASG. Have you worked with this? Auto scaling group deployment yeah. means, yeah. So, multiple, multiple, uh, uh, 
EC2 instance and plus ASG together. Okay, plus ASG together. Services means load balancer. So these are the most important one, but there are more than 57 API resources which is given. We'll have to learn those also. So like that. Okay, so now I'm going to give you the IP address and keys. Let me publish it. So go to the GitHub. IP address uh, and keys nodes. This is the repository I created for you guys only. Mm, subtlety. So here you have kubernet one dot ADHT. Okay, and this nodes I'm pushing up. And here it is. Now, where is your PPK file which you can use with the party? So upload PPK file. And where is that PPK file? Uh, don't copy the key, always download. I repeat, don't copy the key, always download. Many people just download it and then use the wrong key, corrupted key. PM, those who want, I am uploading the PM also. Okay, those who are not comfortable with the PM and all stuff like that, I can set the password also for those people. So, PPC, SSHD, SSHD configurations. Let me set the password also for people who are not comfortable with the key concept. So, where is the password? P. Down, down, password. Yeah. Yes. Yes, yes. There. Password authentication. Yes or no? Uh, yeah. Actually, your your view is uh, good. Actually, I was not able to see that. Actually, that keyword. Not sure what. System CPU. Restart SSHD and then password uh, Ubuntu, right? Ubuntu Raju123. Raju123. So, guys, this is the password for cluster master and username is username is Ubuntu, Ubuntu and password is Raju123. So this one is up. Uh, I'm putting the chat window. Did you confirm in the if you receive the chat window? All of you? Yes, Rajesh. Yeah. So guys, go ahead. I updated this notes. And uh, now Kubernet, I'll update this one more time because I changed the password. So everything you have in the notes, all the commands. And that URL I'm sharing with you about this. Uh, so I'm putting the chat in. So I'll give you 15 to 20 minutes before me talking about the other resources. As this conference will now be recorded. Okay. So right now I'm not interested in 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 a person uh, to find out who has done it rather than fixing its issues. So here, if I do QCTL get notes. Okay. All right. Now has come. I think someone modify the code and again someone has modified the reverted back. Who's the great person? Anyone? He reverted the code again. Someone is doing actually. Without knowledge, he's doing it for sure. Okay. So at least mastered if we got it, okay. He might have modified the configuration file at least. Okay, so now master is there and worker is not there. Okay, so worker is not there. So for that, what I can do, I can reset the worker and yes. Okay, and after that, some changes I have to do and that is uh, while resetting it. Uh, I'm just doing it just again, hold on. Uh, huh. 
so ip tables uh, has to be clean this is not required it's not required here so one more time i'm clearing resetting this yes so ip table has to be clean the command is not here so that's okay so after that i'm going to run this command the command which i stored last time this one before that you know what i will little bit of clean up this etc config for kubelet file and all so where can i clean up so this is the locations i'm having yep so rm i did clean up okay now i'll do one thing you know what kubelet which is running as a process ts hyphen f kubelet and oh it's not running wonderful so system ctl restart kubelet it will not run but still i'm doing it because i want to check is there any problem with formation so no. okay with that i'm just running this command it should restore all this stuff so if it's not doing then we have to do the little bit of different troubleshooting which i'll just ignore it because my uh, objective is to learn the some of the resources on kubernetes rather than uh, you know exploring the worker who has modified what tracing it correcting it and all so let's wait for a few seconds master is up and running guys uh, without knowledge okay without a knowledge don't do any changes because what will happen now it's just like a training boxes but if you this kind of attitude if you do in the production boxes it will bring disaster to your project okay so uh, knowledge rajesh of... rajesh uh, did you give the worker node access as well worker node access is also given uh, in the same machine it's the same uh, same server and on top of that uh, the worker node can be deleted from the master also workstation also no 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 i am asking like you know i was only logged into one server that is master node and then worker node uh, user credentials you have not shared see there it's the same same one same keys same will one. okay yeah so i didn't one, logged in i thought like, yeah one more thing to delete the worker you don't need a, to get into the worker you can do it from the master itself that's what i'm saying for example if you want to oh. delete that you have to just delete the node okay no delete and node and the node name that's all so it will get deleted which which node will be get deleted worker the worker node, node. yes okay. okay so now this is the uh, happening right now let's uh, happen but i don't have a patience for waiting for that what i'll do so guys here what i did master i made it workstation also master also now what i will do one more thing uh, because of this situation i'll make a master as a worker also you tell me why think simple way okay so here you see in the worker what are the components we have proxy we have do we have a proxy in the master yes so all the components we have in the master of worker yes so i can make master as a worker behavior also now the question is how come so let me find a command for it so here if you uh, make kubernet master you uh, not make master should be just so here this is the command state of flow this command will make the master as a worker also okay so some problems new opportunity to learn and uh, this is a, a node here it is that so guys this command will make that my master deployable for worker so let me see if it is fixed or not no and that so now my master is also worker so your cluster is ready anyways with the worker but yeah it will be deploying the pod in the master one okay so let's get started guys so first thing the question is what is a namespace here what is a namespace okay so this is the first question 
what you have in the namespace. So you need to understand this uh, very carefully. So let me create a uh, cluster image. So this is your cluster powered by three worker, maybe 300 worker also, but just for the demo. Now here, this is a mine, uh, one project. Okay, this is my one project. And this is another project in the red. So guys, when you deploy the pod in the Kubernet, so this blue project deploy the pod, three pod, one pod, two pod, three pod. If you notice that this pod is running this, this worker, this pod is running this worker, this pod is running this worker. Now, when you see that red project also deploy the, let's say three pod, one pod, two pod, three pod. And this pod is running in this, this pod is running this, this pod is running this. Now, uh, you know, in the real time, cluster is being shared by multiple projects, multiple teams, and all sorts like that. Okay, so they, uh, the pod, I mean, whole cluster is considered to be one. You cannot say, hey, project one will deploy only in the node one, project B will deploy in the node two. So vertical isolation is not there. Okay, so, so far, so good, right? All of you understood this? So far, so good, right? uh this diagram i this diagram i didn't understand uh, uh rajesh this is a cluster okay. powered by three worker okay below are the workers below are the worker this worker node worker node worker node okay and the above one is the master node no 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 uh, you have to uh, just uh, take one one uh, task offline. What is a cluster you have to understand? Cluster concept is there from last 20 years. So what is the concept of cluster? Cluster you have to understand. Okay, so, so cluster what means... The, what was the top one? What was the top one? This is the cluster. I am talking about cluster. Okay, so that is the cluster and this is the, the below are the worker nodes. Okay, yeah, I'll put it in a, this way. Uh, Let's say you have a five worker node and uh, two GB each worker node you have it. So what is the total capacity? 10 GB? 10. Correct, huh? 10. Huh. So the capacity of cluster is 10 GB. So if someone will ask you, hey, what is your data center capacity, cluster capacity? So it's a 10 GB. So no matter which is powered by five nodes or 10 GB. So here when I depict that, this is I'm depicting the cluster, which represent it can be three nodes also. It can be three no three thousand nodes also. I don't care actually. The one the one which I care is, I care the cluster. Make sense? Yes. So if someone will ask me, Rajesh, what is your cluster size of Kubernetes? So I'll say, uh, for time being, let's say five GB, five GB, five GB. So I'll say fifteen GB RAM, twenty CPU, like that. I talk about. So here I'm saying, so that project one, which is green, project two, which is red, they deploy the pod. Okay, so they deploy the pod. So it's not like it will deploy only in this. It, this, this will deploy in the whole cluster. So it can deploy here, 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 and this is running here, 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 and this is running here, here, here. So basically the both the projects are sharing the same cluster. But worker can be anything. See, when you are talking about the cluster level, you forget the worker level. You are running the cluster. Make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. Are you understanding or maybe confusing? It's just like uh, a profile for the cl cl cluster, right? Profile for dividing. It's just like a profile, multiple profiles for a Kubernetes cluster. No, 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 no. Cluster means not that. Uh, mm, namespaces. No, I, I'm, I'm not talking the namespaces. Actually. He's got a question in the, what is this background, uh, this diagram? What is this diagram? That is a question. Okay. Uh, cluster means uh, combining multiple hardware logical unit into one, log sorry, multiple physical unit into the logical unit. So that is cluster actually. In a data center, we use a lot of this keyword. So probably if you visualize this, see this is the, uh, look at this image of the clusters. Uh, see here. Multiple hardware, multiple software is attached to the one cluster, one runtime environment. See computer one, computer two, computer three, all these things. 
is a clustering actually we do that large data center when you set up you set up a clusters see that something like that. are you understanding durga yeah i mean multiple nodes can be set up in one place right so yeah multiple node can be set up for the one work for hosting application that's called cluster it means cluster is powered by multiple uh, resources you need like cpu ram hard disk and all that yeah and the pods which are running in the worker node uh, you mean to say those pods also running in the cluster uh, no 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 logically we say our pod is running in a cluster but reality actually this is running here or here or here who will decide kubernetes will decide in this case okay see there is a two definition one is a, like a logical definition one is a physical definition so when you say you are running an application in a, a kubernetes cluster so this is combined combined space you are talking about you have to understand the notions of it okay so when we say hey i am running the application in my cluster that means you are not talking i am running a cluster in the worker 1 worker 2 worker 3 no you are running a cluster this cluster represents all the worker of this machines it may be running anywhere i don't care about that one right now make sense yeah got it and to... then what is the master then what is the master node master is gone right now in this whole world this whole the picture master is gone what was the job of the master just to deploy the cluster uh, pod and then after that is gone make sense in this image i am not talking about the master i am all i am talking about still we didn't i didn't get you rajesh I, like what type of explanation would you like to give like when master is the thing where you want to install and deploy everything then why does the work come, worker come into picture when worker is there it is correlated to master right then um, how how is it working actually i still uh, really didn't get you um, i feel like some part okay, is missing, okay, okay. some connection is missing okay okay anyone has got the explanation so far for this question because i am little thinking how to explain anyone else would like to help me here Those who yes. understood. Yes. Yeah. Tell me. Uh, should I explain the architecture point of view? Yeah. Yeah. Please. Please. Please go ahead. Um, we have a master and a node concept where all together called as a cluster. Wonderful. And and we from the laptop uh, are able to log in into the master node and thereby installing the. kubernetes and mm -hmm. the components which are installed in the kubernetes master are api resource api server scheduler control manager as well as its cd mm -hmm. whereas in the node point of view we are uh, from kubernetes point of view we are appointing an agent which is known as kubelet which Wonderful. talks yes. api yeah. server yes and we have another component known as q proxy q proxy will be providing the guys can you mute your internet can you mute let me mute am i audible sorry there was some disturbance from someone now you can continue yeah uh, yeah you q can unmute and continue yeah. q proxy is the one which is able to provide just network connection for the pod wonderful yes whereas the hcd is just mm -hmm. like the content which we uh, for suppose we have a state file in terraform where we write where we will be issuing the terraform the uh, input values which we needed to make an infrastructure likewise in kubernetes we make sure the container runs inside a pod in uh, docker terminology we refer containers but in yeah. kubernetes we call them as pods pod yes okay okay the container we, which we which is running inside the pod will also take the docker as its uh, 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 interaction so that it will be pulling the image from the docker repo and it yes. will be running inside the container correct yeah but and one fundamental question actually i want you to answer 
the question for this last person he said rajesh why do we have a master first place that's the question can you answer uh, to have a single point so that we cannot always go to the worker nodes thereby to make a setup we just Wonderful. will be taking a contact with the master so that master triggers the number of containers but number of pods that should be run Correct. so that we cannot uh, able to concentrate on the worker if Wonderful. we provide the enough resources for the worker node that is like cpu ram uh, etc so that mm -hmm. the resources are divided in a uh, quiet manner so that mm -hmm. each pod is able to accommodate resources for its container wonderful one more question which he has said what is the role of worker who's running application whether application is run by master or worker application is run inside the worker node wonderful. no interaction with the application from our master side yes we have a yeah. load balancer which is hey, just, 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 uh, uh, sorry, sorry to interrupt you right now just keep it the load balancer uh, uh, idle this topic because i don't want to confuse too many uh, people just like okay. uh, in, uh, sir you have skipped yesterday the concept of port forwarding so it is getting some people difficult so how the container is uh, able to yeah. manage an application so we will we'll discuss we'll discuss the services in a separate session because we are starting here right now okay just give me some more time okay so the question was the master why do we have a master and why do we have worker i think someone has this question is it answered or again you want me to explain it so it, it is completed i have yeah, a wonderful. clear picture now wonderful so understand that in simple way master needed to manage the cluster worker no but worker is a place where the application run now coming back to my discussion see cluster setup is done what i wanted to tell you my question was what is a namespace and for that to understand the namespace we need to understand okay this is my cluster and here powered by multiple worker i don't want to talk about it this is a this can be three node this can be 300 nodes where my applications is running application means this pod is running so in reality pod will be running in the worker but when we look at it from outside we say cluster are you understanding no one will no one will remember this node actually where the where the application is running everyone say hey rajesh i'm running in the kubernetes cluster but if i ask you which node it's running so you will respond hey rajesh why you want to bother about it because today maybe it is running in the node 1 but tomorrow you want to be, automatically it will be running in the node 45 so you don't want to know that just the only thing which you know you should know is the cluster are you understanding this node will change yes, will change yes rajesh okay so that's the reason i'm not talking about this node forget about this node worker anymore anyways now talk about the cluster level okay so so far so clear can i move on further yes rajesh okay by the way i forgot to forgot his name who has given explanation what was his name rajesh ashish yes so ashish you will be the champion uh, in your team so any internal questions again if arise in kubernet so you can reach out to ashish uh, if i am not available during af after the session okay so you can put it in the whatsapp group also okay because i i felt he has a clear understanding about the architecture okay so now let's get into the question main question what is a namespace so namespace basically understand this way i was explaining you the scenario actually so this is the project 1 this is the project 2 so like that in real time one clusters will be shared by tens of project tens of project for entire organization there will be one cluster so let's say there's one organization called uh, devops school and they'll be having 15 product project so everyone will use the same cluster actually this cluster right now it's powered by uh, three worker in this image but actually in reality maybe 300 workers also okay so that is a, i don't care about it. now next thing is the problem the fighting will start and this i would like you to focus on this fighting see when there is one cluster one resources when why i say one resources because in the clustering all the resources of cpu ram and hard disk cpu ram and hard disk cpu ram and hard disk combined it that is a kubernetes the that work is doing 
actually so what happens there is a two project there is one cluster the this project has deployed the red red uh, pod and uh, green project has deployed the green pod now what happens think and tell me this answer okay think and tell me let's say this pod has a container container comes from the image image has applications so this application is having some bug this bug and the bug is like this it start consuming lots of cpu lots of ram because of that bug open ended bug is there so tell me one thing so green one pod has a bug the moment you run that pod it start consuming lots of cpu lots of ram and so on so tell me that it's consuming all the almost all the resources on the cluster so tell me that whether the project uh, uh, red will it get impacted from this behavior this this bug or not yes yeah. yes of course why because internally even the it is linked up like when an application runs even that is linked up to that right linked it is like uh, disturbing the hardware resources wonderful yes See, yeah. theoretically, if you look at this architecture, this guy is having bug in the pod, but actually this is running in this machine, no? And this yes. is running in this That's machine, better. and this is running in this machine. So all the machines is getting impacted, and unfortunately, red is also running the pod in this machine, this machine, this machine. So now the red, red people are very red actually. These people are furious on the green, saying that how dare you deploy the pod without a testing because of you guys, we have a downtime, you guys are consuming lots of resources of the cluster, you are, you are not authentically and uh, you know, process wise allowed to do that. So this is one incident. So what I'm trying to say here is this might happen, this might not happen, but two, two team will fight for resources. Resources means team one will say I need a more RAM, team two will say no, I need a more RAM something like that they will fight with each other other resources correct now correct yes now yes, yes. second second incident has happened in next month and that incident has happened so this green team what they did there is one notorious guy just like in our group today we had a notorious guy no he just changed some changes and then this stopped working so so in this team there's one notorious guy and he has a, a habit of trying something which is uh, you know uh, uh something he wants to do something he wants to learn or something like that he is do something because everyone has access to this guy by mistake remove the pod of red by mistake it's like he was not int intentionally doing now red is fury i mean again uh, uh, green guys is uh, there at, sorry let's say this guys red guys is a problem Okay, so red guys did the, some changes to the uh, green guy. Now green guys teams are furious. Think the how dare you touch my pod? Who, who who allowed you to do this? Because of you, we have a client escalations. Our application is downtime. SLA got reduced. SLO got problem. We have to pay for this much of because of this downtime. Correct? No, this guy, this might this this incident may happen, right? Yes. So what I'm trying to say when you have a multiple team working for the multiple team, multiple project is working for the same cluster, in the same cluster, fight will occur. We call it in fighting issues. Fight for the resources like RAM and CPU. Fight for the access. Unauthorized issues may, may pop up. So now the question is how to deal with it? How the Kubernetes will deal with it? So Kubernetes has introduced one uh, API resources and which is called namespace. What we call it namespace. And mind it, look at the drawing. I am doing the horizontal drawing. So they say, hey, listen, don't fight. Don't fight. You do one thing, we'll introduce one namespace. And namespace in that, so that means you deploy the pod in your namespace. And what I will do, uh, I will set the namespace level, one limit. That means no matter how many ports you run, let's say this is a 5 GV, 5 GV, 5 GV. So total cluster is 15 GV. So I'll say no matter how many port you run, you will can maximum consume 7 GV. And this namespace people will maximum consume 5 GV, 4 GV. 
So this is the limit I set at the namespace level. So first I will create this namespace and then I will deploy the pod inside a namespace. Again, mind it, it's not a physical separation. We are not dividing the cluster physical way. It's a logical division. So still this guy will be, the pod will be running in this, this machine only. This pod will be running in this machine only. But Kubernetes control or how much resources you can use overall. You can ask for this node because ultimately resources are here, right? So you cannot ask more than what is set at level of namespace. So now the fighting is over for the resources. If there is a box, this guy is consuming, but maximum you can consume 4 GB, you know? Still you have a remaining 7 GB for the other projects or other projects for the backup. Are you understanding this concept, all of you? Yes, yes. Yeah. So now how do we... How do we solve the other problem? So what Kubernetes says, hey, listen, don't, don't give a permission to the cluster wide. Don't give. It's wrong practice. Yeah, super admin will have a uh, access. But what you do, this team who's working for the project A only give the access to this cluster, different level of clusters, access you can give it. That means, sorry, namespace, sorry, namespace. So now, no matter what you do, you cannot modify this namespace spots because you have access only to the your own namespaces so this kind of issues can be can be addressed using a namespace what is a namespace then namespace is a logical division of cluster logical not a physical it's not like this is your land this is my land this is my server this is your server no you all are both the team is still using the same server but logically kubernetes has a control over the your uses and access that's called cluster management capability by the Kubernetes. Are you understanding? Yeah. Yeah, Rajesh. Yeah. So the question is, this is a namespace. So, so what we have, so this you can divide, create a, uh, how do you work with it? So here, kubectl, get ns. So see here, these are the ns means namespace already there. Why? So then they said, Kubernetes said, hey, we have a namespace concept so we can divide the resources and uh, access and all stuff like that based on the namespace so let's do one thing i'm also running running uh, lots of pod and for our pod system pod for system pod let me have this pod so i will create all of my pod in the namespace cube system Wonderful, no problem. They have created their own namespace and they have deployed all of their application. This will manage your cluster. I repeat, this, this pod only manage their entire cluster. And they have deployed in the namespace, which is called cube system. They will say, Rajesh, okay, I see there is one more namespace is there, which is default. I have not created it's coming default. So what is that for? So this is for the worker administrator maintenance work. So if you want to do the maintenance work for that, you have to run uh, this one, what do you say? A pod, so you can keep the pod running over there. Uh, common common pod you can run in this, a different, different project. And the, this is a default. So those who's having a no namespace will be a part of the default namespace. So now the question is, how can we create a namespace? Very simple. Create NS dev. I created two namespace. Sorry. I created a namespace. So all of you understood the namespace concept? Yeah, but um, one small issue, Rajesh. Uh, like, yeah. can we manually set the space for it or uh, Kubernetes defaultly takes uh, the space or the requirements which is which are required? Your so typically admin what they'll do each project they'll create one namespace and assign access only to their own namespace and you will work in your namespace actually. Uh, is there any format like in one cluster there are only two namespaces anything like that or it can be any number of uh, any number of namespace name. because remember that oh. cluster has no limitation of namespace but resources are limited no only three nodes yeah have, right that's what I'm asking yeah so re resources are limited. Cluster, uh, these objects, uh, as long as your resources, uh, pod is consuming CPU and RAM. Namespace is not consuming CPU and RAM. Pod run container, container, ask for CPU and RAM. Yes. Yeah. So like that. Okay, Rajesh. Thank you. 
so here yeah, i created rajesh rajesh mm-hmm. uh, how can i get to know that uh, which is my cluster here i repeat on which cluster i am and on which ah. cluster i am working actually i am ah. creating some of the you know name spaces and all so mm-hmm. i just want to know where i am in which cluster yeah very good question so for that i can give you the answer is lies in this file and i think you know that file let me remind you uh, did i not copy it i think i did not copy no problem so that config file remember more answer is hidden in this so which is your cluster this is it. what is the name of the cluster you can it but this probably you will not understand too much so no need to worry about it simply you can say you see it you see it one click view only okay this is your api so, server uh-huh. and only one cluster can run in the machine or more than one clusters can be run uh look at the this image i'll keep it open look at that so one cluster yeah. means what cluster means what why we have a cluster concept see one cluster or 10 clusters whether one cluster you can run in the two cluster see cluster we create so we can manage the hardware vms and, all, and we can deploy the pods so uh, one cluster means one resources means if you have a five node and you created one cluster with a two node and another cluster with the three nodes so you'll have a two cluster but if you have one cluster and five worker node you added it will become one cluster it's up to you theoretical okay, okay one more thing whenever you think uh, put yourself in the operations uh, bucket means you are a guy who is managing the thousands of servers and that you want to manage it where you want to deploy your applications put it in this way got it got it so you don't want to share the two hardware resources for two hardware resources for three cluster or two cluster it should be for one cluster because cluster itself can be shared with the multiple team no just now we discuss correct now yes team 1 and team 2 using namespace yeah is there any command uh, you just went to the config file that's it so by doing the config uh, by looking into the configuration file only we can understand that that is yeah. name of the ip and uh, followed by the followed by the this, port in which it is running right this is api server so, in short api server yeah. this is api and server api server is the server itself uh, this uh, that mean, only is doing it. every management right yeah okay and what is the okay kubernetes cluster okay got it got it hmm. okay so this is the stuff so i was discussing about the pod okay so sorry 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 namespace so guys namespace you understood all of you right yeah rajesh Okay. Then. Now, guys, please focus on my screen. Focus on my screen. You just look at this table, guys. So here, if you see left side name, which is the resources, so after that short names, and after that version, okay, version of that particular resources. Now here you have a namespace true and false. so what does that mean anyone would like to tell me uh, if you know because true i'm true in the true in the is state it is, it is oh, continue one by one yeah tell me true true means something like it is present and uh, if it like if it is related the resource is related to namespace it is true if it is not related to namespace it is false yeah good any other inputs on top of it if if the uh, namespace is namespace or the particular uh, cluster is working 
inside uh, the node or whatever it is then it is showing it's true and if it is not working or it is kept silent then it is hmm. false okay i'll ask you two questions okay look at this image which we have been discussing from last 15 minutes okay tell me the pod is inside a namespace or cluster wide tell me a namespace yeah see inside that pod the namespace. see that pod pod is inside a namespace now see the pod yes. see the namespace now i'll show you the real one also so i showed you multiple one see that look at it very carefully all pods i am displaying with you okay look at this these are the pod one two three blah 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 now you see that this yes, belongs right. to the namespace correct so actually yeah. pod belong to the namespace correct now tell me this is a worker this is belong to namespace or entire cluster this worker this worker entire cluster entire cluster so here let's put it in this way there are resources which you can create only in the namespace so the resources is namespace true let me show you the command one more time so here you see why is here if you look at this pod why is true because the pod can be created only inside the namespace but let, let's look at the node 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 where is that here it is so look at this false why is false because false i mean because his node is at the cluster level that's the reason namespace false so here you have a 57 resources out of his some resources you can create at the namespace but 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 some resources you can create at the entire cluster level that means that resources which is available at the cluster level everyone can use it but the resources which is available at the namespace level only those who's a part of that namespace can use it makes sense yeah so that's the reason we have a namespace true and false because of so there are some resources can be created at the cluster level for an entire cluster such as nodes some cluster some resources uh, which is at the pod, I mean namespace level, which is a pod down. So every resources it can be true or false as per the scope of it. Make sense? Yes, clear, Rajesh. Yes, yes. Okay. So now after that, guys, I'll give you one magic formula. Okay, magic formula. Why I'm giving you magic formula? Because I'm a micro services developer also. So I feel explaining this one is easy compared to the giving you the commands blindly. So guys here understand this API server. You know what API server? This is a server and here you have a how many APIs? So let me show you how many APIs you have. You have 72 APIs. So guys, what do you do with the API, each API, each API, what can you do? Tell me each API, you might have worked with the Facebook API, Twitter API, LinkedIn API, Amazon API, Flipkart API, all you know, you know that API, right? So what do you do with the API? Some are used like, for commenting, liking. Uh, anything else? We'll get the information. Each okay. Each API has its own functionality by issuing the request and response in the format. Mm -hmm. yeah. good, good. So each API is equal to one function. Okay. Like function, sending you know, the request in HTTP and uh, receiving in a JSON format, I think. Yeah, that is only awesome. Uh, that is also. So here I'll tell you that each API v is equal to one function. Okay. And each API, once you ask a developer, uh, hey, hey, uh, guys, tell me how do you uh, develop this API? So he will say simply, hey, I did not do anything great. I just created one function, which is called create. And I created another function, which is called red. And I again, edit, update, and delete. So this function developer has created. This is done by developer of the microservices developer. So that means if you are developing a function, no? you should have these five, four functions into it. So create, read, update, delete. That we call it a CRUD. Have you heard about it? Yeah. Yeah. So this is the yes. something which do. Now for the end user perspective, what they will do? End user perspective. So how do would they call this function? 
so they will call through what so put put get get post 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 and last one delete this is called html verb right http verb sorry if you put it in google http verb have you have you done the software development no rajesh you should try actually at least one simple application develop no don't get scared from the programming and all take one python program a uh, python uh, project and read through that they will see that four functions only one microservices okay so try this one you, you remember that uh, devops allows you to learn everything but not allow you to scared because devops says hey don't learn everything don't learn i mean don't deep dive into everything but learn everything something like so you programming just uh, five lines of program here 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 and just just insert name and age name and age so you created a name and age read the name and age update the name and age and delete the name and age now this is something we do that is just like a, within a two to three hours you will you will to do that with the help of google after that you make it available these are the url so url they will call this url and this pass this verb put get post and delete that is how you do that see here this is the url see here so get inventory post order get order id delete order id correct now all of you are understanding right mm. yeah rajesh Okay, yes, so right. next thing, so next thing you must be wondering why I'm talking about all this thing, guys. This 72 APIs also you have to do the CRUD only. Each API namespace is API, pod is API, this is API, that is API. 72 APIs which I'm showing you these are the APIs actually. So you have just need to know what exactly these APIs are for, and what you need to do is you need to do the CRUD. That's all. So can we do the CRUD? So I'll I'll teach you the pattern for every 72 APIs. So create, read, update, delete. How do we create through command line? How do you update uh, create using YAML file also? Both the way JSON also you can use that. Okay. So here also command YAML, command YAML, all this thing. You know. Sorry. So command YAML, command YAML. So these all things we can do that each one of every action. So now the question is, can we find out the command for it? So guys, look at my screen, all of you, and we'll find ourselves only together. I'm not going to teach you. So tell me one thing, where is the command for create? Tell me. The first one, beginner. Okay, beginner. See, I'm not finding, you only finding it. And YAML, I'll just teach you. Create hyphen app YAML file. That means QCTL, create hyphen app, QCTL create command. QCTL, you have to add it in every command. Can you tell me where is it read command? Get, get. See, you are finding, describe, there's one command I'm adding from myself, okay? So here, describe, you see somewhere here, you see. Okay, so YAML, what? Get hyphen F, uh, hyphen F, YAML, YAML, YAML file. Okay, update. Can you please tell me how can we update command for it? Set. Apply. Edit also, no? Edit is there also. Correct, now. Yeah. So edit and command and YAML file. Then for that we have apply hyphen F, YAML file. Okay, so see one more thing. It's not only for the namespace. It's for the entire 72 resources, by the way. Okay, this pattern I'm teaching you for everything. Okay, so now what is the uh, delete? Can you tell me? Delete. Yeah. So now you got to know how can you work with each API service in one go only. So you don't have to ask anyone how can I do this? How can I do that? You just know what is a pod, what is namespace, what is a replication controller, what is service, what is this, what is that. 
you apply this logic to every api resources not only in the kubernetes outside of the world also because i am telling you from the coding per perspective getting my points yeah okay so now let's start doing with namespace okay can i do that so guys look at my screen all of you i am doing in the context so how do i get the namespace qctl get ns how do i edit the namespace how do i create the namespace create ns raju see here get raju how do i edit this so edit raju create no edit ns raju here what i want to add it so right now i'm not adding it because i don't have a knowledge right now so if i don't have a knowledge then you always stick to your mind change the labels and it's yaml no tab only space and here what is the environment this you are running let's say uh, my dev demo demo environment something like that you just add it save it can i see this get ns can i describe this and see the label got added or not so raju right raju name space spelling mistake guys raju name space see here this uh, labels got added now can i delete that see here the fun of it and see that get ns get ns get ns is not there gone gone understood this how do you use the crud operation and the the magic formula which i said with every apis which you can apply are you understanding all of you yes rajesh yeah so guys yeah so this is the stuff go with the concept each and every output don't run this command i have run already okay and uh, try this all commands and this and remember this algorithm and do it and after that we'll go ahead and wrap up the session and tomorrow i'm going to teach you pod replication controller and deployment something like that okay so i need to be slow because you you guys will understand the concept if i try to hurry probably you guys will get confused i just felt it the problem is only time timeline when you have a time no then you you explain in a relaxed way but that is a challenge any questions anyone have any question okay before uh, going for you don't mind rajesh can i get your credentials for uh, uh, this uh, what do you call it? your uh, ubuntu master node so that we can i give work. it no i gave it did you yeah you gave session? it but uh, is it okay if we work in it yes sir. so it will be accessible up to the 2 o'clock after that it will be shut down i mean shut down is stop okay so this will be available during the session maybe a little bit of one hour extra but after the session it will be stop uh, if you want me to run uh, uh, longer duration then uh, talk to uh, raju or uh, prashad or someone and if he'll approve me i will i will run it more also okay. yeah sure just to practice uh, this you said no 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 uh, uh honey we can install yes. that in our lab right we have the lab servers and we can install it yeah because uh, yeah he is running the aws you know instance so that is the reason i think yeah okay. and one more uh, thing rajesh yeah uh, rajesh i just pinged you early in the morning today for uh, you know aws lab uh, did you i mean just wanted to know like uh, our company subscribed for that aws lab session from you okay i'll, I'll tell you uh, this one can we discuss offline because there's yeah, some yeah, instruction yeah. come from the prashad so after this session you can call okay yeah yeah sure